Hello everyone, my name is David. Today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. Guys, there are cases where the culprit is not caught, but in most cases the culprit leaves some evidence behind after committing the crime. Today's case is no different, where a small mistake foiled a perfect murder plan leading to the arrest of two killers. But how a mutton soup helps police to solve this case, you'll find out by watching the video till the end. There is a district in the state of Telangana, India, called Nagar Kurnul. Before we proceed, let me tell you that Telangana state is famous for being the gateway to the Krishna and Godavari rivers in southern India. Nagar Kurnul is renowned for its ghats, temples, and spiritual environment. In Nagar Kurnul, a couple used to live with their two children. It was November 26, 2017, when suddenly Swathi Reddy's husband, Sudhakar Reddy, fell very ill. That day, there was no one else in the house besides Sudhakar and Swathi. Their two children had gone to stay at their grandparents' house a few days earlier. After panicking, Swathi informed Sudhakar's cousin, Arvind Reddy, that Sudhakar's condition had suddenly deteriorated. Upon hearing this news, Arvind rushed to Sudhakar's side. After this, Sudhakar was taken to the hospital. While being taken to the hospital, Sudhakar became unconscious and regained consciousness only after treatment. Sudhakar had no idea what had happened to him, how he became unconscious, and when he was taken to the hospital. When Sudhakar regained consciousness, he asked his wife when and how he became unconscious, to which Swathi replied that he had fallen from the bed in a drunken state, after which he became unconscious. However, Sudhakar's condition improved on November 26th, and Swathi brought him home. Yet, for Sudhakar's care, his cousin brother Arvind stayed at their house that night. However, he returned home the next morning, on November 27th, because Sudhakar's health had completely improved. Shortly after Arvind Reddy returned home, another incident occurred with Sudhakar. Four masked men entered Sudhakar's house, and when Sudhakar resisted, they severely beat him up. Then they poured petrol on his face and other parts of his body, and set him on fire, causing severe burns to Sudhakar's face and body. After this, Swathi quickly took Sudhakar to a private hospital. Sudhakar was screaming in pain, and everyone present at the hospital was shocked to see Sudhakar's condition. Meanwhile, Swathi informed Sudhakar and her family members about this incident by calling them. Afterwards, the hospital staff quickly take Sudhakar to the emergency room and start his treatment. By now, Sudhakar's mother, his brother Surendra, and other family members also arrive at the hospital. After a few hours, there is some improvement in Sudhakar's condition, but the doctor suggests that Sudhakar will need plastic surgery to fix his face, which Swathi agrees to. Plastic surgery is an expensive procedure, but since Sudhakar was a businessman, it was easy for Swathi to afford it. Now Sudhakar's treatment is ongoing, and after staying in the hospital for several days, when there is some improvement in his condition, he tries to speak. However, the burns were so severe that it affected his throat too, making it difficult for Sudhakar to speak clearly. During this time, Sudhakar's brother Surendra filed a complaint at the police station regarding the attack on Sudhakar on November 28th. Now, because Sudhakar still had many bandages on his face, he communicated through gestures to explain his side of the story. Sudhakar's parents and brother also stayed in the hospital with Swathi to take care of Sudhakar. As days passed and Sudhakar's condition improved, the doctor suggested he take a liquid diet. Sudhakar really liked mutton soup, so his mother brought some to the hospital for him. However, it was surprising that Sudhakar refused to drink the mutton soup. At first, Sudhakar's family thought maybe he just wasn't in the mood for it yet. But when Sudhakar continued to refuse the mutton soup, his family found it very odd, because typically, during recovery, people crave their favorite foods and drinks. Sudhakar was such a big fan of mutton soup that everyone knew about it. But this time, his refusal to drink it raised a suspicion in his brother Surendra's mind, although he didn't share it with anyone. Sudhakar's face was more than 30% burned, but now his health had improved significantly. However, Sudhakar's parents and brother noticed that along with Sudhakar's facial changes, his physical appearance had also changed considerably. 
His way of sitting, speaking, and his little habits had all changed significantly. Observing all these things, Sudakar's parents and brother began to suspect that the person admitted to the hospital wasn't Sudakar, but someone else. But now, to confirm their suspicions, Sudakar's parents started questioning their son. After that, they noticed another strange thing. Sudakar, who had started speaking a little after the treatment, now began to communicate through gestures and started explaining things in writing. After this, Sudakar's family filed another complaint with the police, alleging that someone had impersonated their son, Sudakar. The family cast suspicion on their own daughter-in-law, Swathi. Subsequently, the police visited the hospital and first approached Sudakar. Then the police began questioning Sudakar, but he remained silent on the bed, refusing to answer the police's questions. As a result, the police started questioning Sudakar's wife, Swathi. During this interrogation, the police felt that Swathi was nervous and was repeatedly changing her statements. Initially, she had blamed a physiotherapist for assaulting her husband. Swathi claimed that she used to visit a physiotherapist named Rajesh for physiotherapy. However, Rajesh deceitfully took pictures of her in inappropriate situation and then began blackmailing her to engage in a physical relationship, even threatening harm to her husband and both children. Despite giving statements to the police, Swathi continued to change her statement, leading the police to become suspicious of her. Subsequently, the police searched for Rajesh for several days, but they couldn't find him anywhere. The case that came to the Telangana police was the most bizarre case so far, so the Telangana police signed a special investigator for it. Whether the man lying in the hospital was Sudakar or not could only be determined through his fingerprints. Therefore, with careful planning, the police secretly took fingerprints from the man and started matching the data and records of all Sudakar's documents. A few days later, when the results came, the fingerprints didn't match, meaning the person scheduled for plastic surgery in the hospital was not Sudakar, but someone else. Now, when Sudakar and Swathi's families found out, they were shocked. Swathi's father even considered the man as his son-in-law and had spent a lot of money on his treatment. Now, the police had some questions such as who the man lying in the hospital is, where the real Sudakar is, and why Swathi is calling him her husband. Anyway, to know the answers to all these questions, the police called Swathi to the police station and started detailed questioning about the entire incident from the attack on Sudakar to admitting him to the hospital. Swathi was interrogated for several hours. In the initial questioning, Swathi didn't tell the police anything. But when the police questioned her firmly, Swathi told a story that surprised even the police, who were having a hard time believing it. Friends, before moving forward in the video, I have a small request for you. I want to let you know that behind the David True Crime channel, there is a team of five people who work hard to bring you the best quality content through thorough research. Currently, our team is entirely dependent on the YouTube Partner Program, but due to low subscribers on our channel, we are not receiving any financial support from YouTube. Therefore, we are unable to cover the expenses of video production. Without financial support, we won't be able to continue working for long. If you appreciate our efforts, you can support us according to your preference by visiting the link provided in the description. Your small support will motivate us to work effectively on the channel. Thank you. Now, let's continue with the story. In 2014, Swathi married Suda Kar in what was an arranged marriage. Suda Kar was a businessman, while Swathi was a nurse at a hospital. They later had two children. A few years into their marriage, Swathi began experiencing back pain, which eventually led her to visit a doctor with Sudakar. The doctor then suggested a physiotherapist named Rajesh. Initially, Swathi would visit the physiotherapist with Sudhakar, but later, due to Sudhakar's busy schedule, she started going alone. After some time, Swathi and Rajesh began an affair. When Sudhakar wasn't home, Rajesh would come to Swathi's house to meet her, and they would also talk on the phone multiple times a day. Now, Swathi wanted to marry her lover, Rajesh. However, she couldn't divorce Sudakar because she also wanted his property. Swathi's dream couldn't come true as long as Sudakar was alive. 
Therefore, between August and September 2017, Swathi and Rajesh started planning to get rid of Sudakar. During this time, Swathi watched a movie called Yavadu, which gave her a wicked idea. She shared this idea with Rajesh. Later, they watched the movie more than 20 times and decided that if Sudakar were to be killed and Rajesh underwent plastic surgery to change his appearance, Swathi could spend her whole life with Rajesh and Sudakar's property would be hers. Now both of them started researching to make this plan a reality. Before killing Sudakar, they met with a plastic surgeon one day, and from there they got the idea that plastic surgery would only be possible when someone's face is 30% burnt. Meanwhile, a week before Sudhakar's murder, Sudhakar's cousin brother saw Swathi with Rajesh in a car. After that, the cousin brother informed Sudhakar about it, which led to a heated argument between Swathi and Sudhakar. But now, Tired of these fights, Swathi chose the 26th of November to kill her husband. But before that, she started training Rajesh to become like Sudakar. She taught Rajesh how to walk, talk, behave, dress, and also about his habits. After that, Swathi sent both of her children to her parents' house. Then, on the night of the 26th of November, before Sudakar came home, Rajesh came to Swathi's house and hid. After Sudakar arrived home, Rajesh attacked him from behind, which made Sudakar unconscious, but he didn't die. After that, Swathi called Rajesh's cousin brother to the house and told him that Sudakar fell off the bed, got injured, and fainted. Then both Arvind and Swathi took Sudakar to the hospital. When Sudakar's condition improved, both of them brought Sudakar back home. Then the next day, after Arvind left, Swathi messaged her lover Rajesh to come home. Now, since Swathi was a trained nurse, she injected Sudakar with anesthesia while he was sleeping in the afternoon, causing him to become unconscious. After that, both of them pressed Sudakar's mouth with a pillow, and then Rajesh beat Sudakar to death with an iron rod. They also disfigured Sudakar's face completely, so that even if someone saw his corpse, they wouldn't recognize him. Then they wrapped Sudakar's body in a bedsheet, placed it in a car, and took it to the nearby forest where they sprinkled petrol on Sudakar's body and set it on fire. After destroying all evidence, it was time to execute the second most horrifying part of the conspiracy. According to the plan, Swathi had to replace Sudakar with Rajesh in her life. This could only be possible if Rajesh's face was made to look like Sudakar's. Therefore, after Rajesh agreed, Swathi decided to burn his face. After that, Swathi slowly poured acid onto Rajesh's face with her own hands to destroying it. The face she once loved was now being ruined by her own hands, and now the acid was slowly burning Rajesh's face. After that, Swathi took Rajesh to the hospital and then called Sudakar and her family members to tell them a fake story about Sudakar's condition. After that, when doctors told Swathi that Sudakar would need plastic surgery to improve his condition, Swathi immediately agreed. Now, you know the rest of the story of how Sudakars became suspicious when Sudakars didn't drink the mutton soup, and then how Swathi and Rajesh were caught. If Rajesh had drunk the mutton soup, perhaps they wouldn't have been caught by now. Actually, Rajesh refused to drink the soup because he was a vegetarian. In the end, the police arrested Swathi on December 10th, 2017, and found Sudakar's body. Because Rajesh was undergoing treatment at that time, the police arrested him later. But when Rajesh was discharged from the hospital, the police arrested him again, and then Rajesh revealed that he didn't want to kill Sudakar. In fact, he wanted to elope and marry Swathi, but Swathi chose this plan to acquire her husband's property after murdering him. But when Swathi was arrested, her parents said that due to their daughter's actions, she should be hanged. So far, Rajesh and Swathi have faced the consequences of their actions, proving that the result of evil deeds is also evil. Although Swathi was granted bail by the court after eight months in jail, none of her relatives went to the police station to take her. So with that, the Sudakar Reddy murder case comes to an end right here. If you appreciate our efforts, like and share this video. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. Thank you.